<clears throat> so hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to the session of pib current affairs where we are going to discuss some more questions from the pib news which are relevant for all the government exams all right so let's begin with the session without any delay but before we begin if you are coming here for the first time do subscribe to the channel and press this bell icon you can also join this telegram group here you will get the pdf of this session after the session is completed and you can also ask your doubts here you can also follow me on instagram here also you can ask any doubt all right so let's talk about the very first question which says how much funds have been allocated for continuation of scheme of assistance to national sports federation for 2021-22 to 2025-26 so as the question says that the union government has approved the continuation of this scheme which is scheme of assistance to national sports federation from 2021-22 to 2021-26 तो basically चार चार या पांच सालों के लिए इसको बढ़ा दिया गया है ठीक है इंदर चार सालों के लिए बढ़ाया गया है 2021 से 25 तक के लिए ठीक है financial year 2022 actually अगर हम इसको correctly बोलें तो financial year 2022 to financial year 2026 तक इसको extend किया गया है alright so let's talk about the scheme then कि ये scheme क्या है now guys देखो इस तरीके की जो schemes होती हैं ये कोई बहुत ज़्यादा important नहीं होती but we have to discuss these uh, such type of schemes because they are in news all right so <clears throat> in schemes ke hum detail mein nahi jayenge aur jaane ki zarurat bhi nahi hai because that is not required for your exam all right so talking about the schemes so remember the objective of the scheme is to provide financial assistance to national sports federation naam se pata chal raha hai scheme of assistance to national sports federation which means some kind of assistance is being provided to national sports federation under this particular scheme now this assistance guys is what financial assistance all right so financial assistance is being provided to the national sports federation thereby supporting national teams for all national and international sporting events it was launched way back in the year 2001 by ministry of youth affairs and sport which is currently headed by mr anurag thakur who is also the minister of information and broadcasting and uh, his lok sabha constituency is hamirpur हमीरपुर हिमाचल प्रदेश से आते हैं वो उनकी लोकसभा कंस्टिट्यूएंसी है और जो एक्सटेंड हुआ है पीरियड के लिए मतलब जो चार साल का एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड है उसका जो आउटले है दैट इज गाउस इज हाउ मच रुपीज वन फाइव सेवन फाइव करोर्स ओके सो इतना ही पढ़ना है मोर देन दिस इट इज नॉट रिक्वायर फॉर द एग्जाम राइट सो दैट इज वाई द करेक्ट आंसर गाइज विल बी वॉट ऑप्शन डी वन फाइव सेवन फाइव करोर बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ मच फंड एलोकेटेड फॉर कंटिन्यूएशन सो वन फाइव सेवन फाइव करोर is the amount of fund that is being allocated for the continuation of this particular scheme all right so now let's talk about question number 2 in which of the following north eastern states location for saffron cultivation have been identified under the saffron bowl project now is this a new project is this a new scheme no it is already under implemented but it is in news because in the parliament a reply was submitted and in that reply it was mentioned that a few locations have been identified in arunachal pradesh and meghalaya in these two states arunachal pradesh and meghalaya a few locations have been identified for saffron cultivation under saffron bowl project now what is this saffron bowl project by the way remember we all know ki hamare desh mein jo saffron ki cultivation hai it is dominant in jammu and kashmir theek hai dominant in jammu and kashmir so ये जो सेफरॉन की कल्टीवेशन है उसको नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स में लाने के लिए दिस प्रोजेक्ट वाज लॉन्च इन द ईयर 2020 एज अ पायलट प्रोजेक्ट बेसिकली दिस प्रोजेक्ट वाज लॉन्च इन द ईयर 2022 टू एक्सपैंड द सेफरॉन कल्टीवेशन टू नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया व्हिच इज करेंटली ठीक है जो कि अभी कहां पे है व्हिच इज करेंटली इन ओनली इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑलराइट सो इट वाज लॉन्च इन 2020 एज अ पायलट प्रोजेक्ट टू एक्सपैंड सेफरॉन कल्टीवेशन टू नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया the implementing agency for this and where it was launched as a pilot project in which state it was launched as a pilot project in sikkim all right do remember this the implementing agency for this is nectar and what is this nectar north east center for technology application and reach north east center for technology application and reach which in short is nectar is the implementing agency all right and as i told you it was launched at a pilot launched as a pilot project in sikkim and after the success of pilot project it was rolled out in arunachal pradesh and meghalaya where new locations have been identified all right 
अरुणाचल प्रदेश और मेघालय के लिए जो टोटल कॉस्ट है प्रोजेक्ट की दैट इज हाउ मच रुपीज वन सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स एट लाख फॉर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग दिस प्रोजेक्ट अरुणाचल प्रदेश एंड मेघालय द टोटल कॉस्ट इज सेवनटीन पॉइंट सिक्स एट लैक्स और राइट सो दैट्स वाई द करेक्ट आंसर वुड बी वॉट मेघालय बिकॉज आउट ऑफ दीज फाइव मेघालय इज दी वन वेयर दिस वेयर दीज लोकेशन बीन आइडेंटिफाइड मेघालय एंड अरुणाचल प्रदेश और राइट सो ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर गाइज Moving ahead to question number three, with respect to the anti-human trafficking units, you have to identify the correct statement. So, is is, is it something new? No, ये कुछ नया नहीं है because uh, इसको हम इसलिए पढ़ रहे हैं because the reply was submitted by Ministry of Home Affairs uh, with respect to the anti-human trafficking units, and that's why we are discussing it. And in any exam, it is directly related to the social issues part. If you if in your exam the social issues is in your syllabus then it is definitely important for you all right so a reply was submitted in which it was said that as per the national crime record bureau's annual publication that is crime in india 2020 a total 696 anti human trafficking units have been established across the country pure desh mein 696 anti human trafficking units ko establish kiya ja chuka hai as per the annual publication of ncrb that is crime in india 2020 now what is the role of these anti human trafficking units inka kya kaam kya hota hai kyu banaya jata the basic objective of uh, establishing anti human trafficking units is the law enforcement and liaising with other concerned agency for care and rehabilitation of victims all right and these are established under scheme for establishment of integrated ahtus which is being implemented by <coughs> ministry of होम अफेयर्स राइट नाउ रिमेंबर अब इसको इंप्लीमेंट द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स कर रहा है बट द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ सेटिंग अप एच टी यूज लाइज विद द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड ऑल्सो द मैन पार विच इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर मैनेजिंग द एच टी यूज आर ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडेड बाई द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट थ्रू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स प्रोवाइड सर्टेन टाइप ऑफ सपोर्ट लाइक फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट टेक्निकल सपोर्ट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम बाकी एच टी एस को एच टी यूज को सेटअप करने का काम स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का ही है and the manpower required for managing the ashtus are also being provided by state governments only all right and ministry of home affairs has already <clears throat> provided rupees 100 crore to all the states for implementation of this particular scheme so now let's talk about the question we have to identify the correct statement these units are established by the state governments at district level this is absolutely correct it is the responsibility of state governments straight gov uh, central government <coughs> sorry guys has the responsibility of providing the manpower required for managing the astus no it is the duty it is the responsibility of state government not the central government and ministry of home affairs has provided rupees 100 crore to all the states for implementation of this scheme ye bhi bilkul sahi hai so one and three which means option c will be the correct answer so i hope this question is also clear now let's talk about the question number four consider the following statements with respect to the scheme for pension and medical aid to artist and you have to identify the correct statement very very important question because is scheme ke bare mein bahut kam hi zikr hota hai i believe in the last one year it is the very first time when this scheme is coming news so that's why ye kafi zyada important ho jati hai so let's talk about this scheme now again it is a news because a reply was submitted uh, by the ministry of culture and in that reply the scheme was discussed all right so talking about this scheme so remember as the name suggest scheme for pension and medical aid to artist all right so as the name suggest i always uh, you know i always main hamesha ye kehta hu ki jo scheme ka objective hota hai the objective of the scheme can be derived from its name only theek hai we do not have to go and read all the you know uh, you, uh, the, the list of objectives given in the document just focus on the name of the scheme uh, uh, scheme and you would be able to derive the objective of that particular scheme all right so the objective is to improve financial and social economic state of of old aged artists and scholars now please focus on this word old aged artists and scholars all right and these are those artists and scholars which have contributed a lot in their respective in their respective fields but currently are in pecuniary conditions they do not have uh, uh, that much amount of uh, money to sustain their life theek hai to unko support karne ke liye this scheme is being implemented by ministry of culture which is headed by mr g kishan reddy theek hai g kishan reddy is ke minister hai and he is also of course the minister of tourism 
there are two components under this scheme one is related to pension and one is related to medical aid so national artist pension fund and national artist medical aid fund are the two components of this scheme talking about national artist pension fund now what is the what is this fund iski baat kar lete hain so remember all the professional and non professional artists who are above 60 years of age and who have annual income less than rupees 48000 are eligible under this particular scheme and there is one more condition that the application should already be getting a pension of at least rupees 500 per month from the concerned state government or the ut administration okay yeah, so these are the three conditions for getting eligible under this national artist pension fund now what are the support provided by the government what are the what is the nature of financial assistance so the financial assistance guys is provided in the form of monthly allowance which is a maximum of rupees 48000 per month ठीक है मैक्सिमम कितना है 4000 पर मंथ एंड आउट ऑफ दिस 4000 500 एट लीस्ट शुड बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट जो ये वाले 500 थे जो पीछे हमने देखे ठीक है द 500 एट लीस्ट शुड बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और द यूटी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड द रेस्ट 3500 विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड दैट दिस अमाउंट इज द मैक्सिमम दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वुड प्रोवाइड अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम ओके Now talking about National Artist Medical Aid Fund, so this is to provide a convenient and affordable health insurance coverage to the existing beneficiary artist. Now, what is the meaning of existing beneficiary artist? Existing beneficiary artist under the National Pension Fund, जो ये National Artist Pension Fund है, उसके अंदर जो already existing beneficiaries हैं, they would get a health insurance coverage, and their spouse will also get this coverage uh, under the National Artist Medical Aid Fund. All right, and who are the eligible beneficiaries? So all the existing beneficiaries who are getting financial assistance under the pension fund, and expenses of providing health insurance is completely borne by the central government. There is no, uh, there is no contribution from the state government side in this particular component. All right. So that's it about this news. And now let's come back to the question. You have to identify the correct statement. Annual income of beneficiary should be less than sixty thousand. No, sixty thousand. No, it is forty-eight thousand. All right, and central government's contribution, <coughs> sorry, shall not exceed rupees thirty-five hundred per month. Yes, this is absolutely correct. And state governments have to contribute at least rupees five hundred per month. At least five hundred. मतलब they could also contribute more than five hundred. All right. In that case, the state government, uh, central government share will reduce. Expenses of providing health insurance is borne by the central government. ये भी सही है. So only two and three option B will be the correct answer. and let's talk about the question number 5 which is the last question for today very very important question definitely aapke exam mein aane wala hai ye so consider the following statements with respect to towns of export excellence and you have to identify the correct statement this is again this is nothing new but ye bahut kam news mein aaya hai aaj tak theek hai what is the meaning of towns of export excellence aisa bahut kam dekha jata hai so this time it is in news and that's why there is a huge chance that it is going to be asked in your exam all right so it is in news because recently a reply was submitted with respect to the towns of export excellence and in that reply it was said that 39 towns have been recognized as towns of export excellence under the foreign trade policy foreign trade policy ke andar towns of export excellence 39 towns of export excellence ko recognize kiya gaya hai all right now what is the meaning of towns of export excellence iska matlab kya hota hai remember a town which is producing goods of rupees 750 crore or more a town which is producing goods of rupees 750 crores or more can be recognized as towns of export excellence now why why it is can be recognized is there any more condition yes the the, uh, the another condition is the potential of growth for exports okay so it is not enough that you are producing goods of 750 crore or more then you will be recognized Uh, uh basically that town will be recognized as town town of export excellence there is one more condition and that is the town should have a good potential of growth for the exports only then that town will be recognized as town of export excellence all right but yahan pe ek baat yaad rakhenge for town of export excellence in handloom handicraft agriculture and fisheries this threshold uh, limit of 750 crore is rupees how much 150 crore ये जो थ्रेश लिमिट यहाँ पे 750 करोड़ की है वो कम होके कितनी हो जाती है 150 करोड़ इन केस ऑफ फोर सेक्टर्स विच आर हैंडलूम हैंडीक्राफ्ट एग्रीकल्चर एंड फिशरीज ऑल राइट 
नाउ व्हाट आर दी बेनिफिट्स ऑफ बिकमिंग टाउन्स ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एक्सीलेंस क्या बेनिफिट होगा अब नाम दे दिया मेरे को कि यू आर अ टाउन ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एक्सीलेंस तो उससे मैं क्या करूंगा उसका तो मैं चार्ज डालूंगा नहीं मेरे को कुछ तो चाहिए तो यस गवर्नमेंट आपको दे रही है रिकॉग्नाइज यूनिट्स इन द टाउन ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एक्सीलेंस कैन अवेल फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस अंडर मार्केट एक्सेस इनिशिएटिव स्कीम फॉर एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन प्रोजेक्ट नाउ वी डोंट हैव टू गो इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ मार्केट एक्सेस इनिशिएटिव स्कीम बिकॉज दैट इज क्वाइट टेक्निकल स्कीम एंड दैट इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जाम and second benefit is that the common service providers in these towns are entitled for authorization under export promotion capital goods scheme again this is also a very technical scheme not important for the exam all right just remember these two facts that these are the two benefits of becoming towns of exports excellence now in fact they are not going to ask this in your exam it is just for the basic understanding that what are the benefits of becoming towns of export excellence okay these points you can use if there let's say there is any question uh in your rpi uh, phase 2 or in upsc mains or in nabad phase 2 where you are uh, where you have to write something about the export then in that you can use this town of export excellence and write the benefits of becoming towns of export excellence all right so such this way you can use uh, these two facts all right so we have to identify the correct statement again a town producing good of 1000 crore or more thousand nahi hai ji 750 crore hai and in the case of handloom handicraft fisheries and uh, agriculture the threshold limit is 150 crores or more you know in uh, the town of export excellence can avail financial assistance under market access initiative scheme bilkul sahi baat hai 39 towns have been recognized as the towns of export excellence under 400 policy ye bhi bilkul sahi hai so only 2 and 3 will be the correct answer guys to this question all right so that's it for the session today i hope all the questions are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next session on wednesday goodbye take care and god bless